Hey guys, I'm very, very excited to bring you this. I'm here in New Zealand and I'm here in E-Shaft Rotary Heaven. Precision Engineering. Now this is where it's all happened. It's this one shop in New Zealand. Jeff uh, is a, the uh, business owner, engineer. Now he was the first guy to build an aftermarket or his own four rotor E-Shaft that is uh, working, it's in at least Oh, he sold probably upwards of 50, he's told me. Um, we know the products work. I've been in two of the cars on the weekend. Now, in regards to the five rotor E-shaft, there are three in existence, okay? Um, one of which I'm about to show you inside. The other two are still getting worked on. Um, now, the balancing of those five rotor E-shafts, Jeff has told me they are quite tricky. He spent a lot of time R&Ding it to get the firing pattern. Um, correct and the balancing so the two issues and you have to get both of those right for it to work now six rotor we know the RX4 we know the BMW we know um, Rob uh, Darm has one as well um, we know the one that you saw in my video um, there's another one there in total there's seven okay now as for a seven rotor e -sharp, Jeff is saying because of the complications involved to get the five rotor with the issues I just mentioned, a seven rotor would be quite a, a difficult one to do. You would be more inclined to go for an eight rotor, which is what I'm trying to achieve. That would be more realistic to achieve and it would be, in his opinion, and he is the expert and it comes to this field, he would say an eight rotor is possible if you got those two issues and the issues that I'm about to go through with you guys uh, to show you. Now, in terms of power, four rotors i have confirmed that there is a shop somewhere um, through jeff we're not going to name it that has cracked 2000 horsepower out of a four rotor uh precision engineering uh e-shaft okay so as for a five rotor can it make the same sort of power with a turbo we don't know because there's only three that's uh ever been made um, as for a six rotor, um, no one's really leaned on the e-shaft so we don't know how much power a six rotor is going to make obviously with the eight rotor um, issues that we've got and I'm about to go through. So please everyone, I really hope you appreciate Jeff um, allowing me to show this because um, no one else has ever been through the doors like this. The guy's done incredible things for the rotor scene. Um, I believe in my opinion, he deserves a lot more credit um, because without him, there wouldn't have been a four rotor e-shaft, a five rotor, a six rotor, potentially an eight rotor. Um, so the guy is very, very humble. Um, yeah, so yeah, please uh, write some good comments because I'm sure Jeff will, will have a bit of a look. Um, the guy, um, yeah, I can't speak more highly of him. So please also like and subscribe uh, so that I can keep doing this. Um, yeah, guys, and enjoy. It's a five rotor e -shaft. Uh I've got three rotor e shafts here, short and long blocks. So I'm about to show everyone the differences between the two. We've got uh, four rotor. And then we've even got the three rotor E-shafts with a special bearing uh, centers in there. This lobe here, you can see that short. So that's your short block, three rotor. And then your long block is that lobe there. So I'll put two of them up together. Jeff's just explained that to me and it's pretty, it's pretty clear that that's relatively easy to tell the difference. Now I've had a few comments, um, people saying that why don't you just connect two four rotor E-shafts together, upwards to join the two. So in theory, I could make an eight rotor joining two four rotor E-shafts with a, uh, a coupler joining the two in the middle. Um, that's kind of not the idea that I'm trying to do. Um, it was always thought that to see how many times we can stack um, the rotor housings and the plates together that was my concept to see how far you can go with that um, the issue with doing that is you've got after speaking to Jeff who's developed the four rotor the five rotor the six rotor and Jeff's saying to me that it's a firing order um, and it's a balancing uh, issue as well so there's a lot of question marks around the five rotor e-shaft um, being that it's not proven yet. The lobes slide on and then they lock in and then you just keep these stacking on. So six, seven, eight, we're talking probably here. Uh, so 25 years ago I was making lots of flywheels um, and then a company in the UK called Hurley, he made a three rotor, very similar to this. 
we ran it with SD card readers and yeah. it went, he had trouble with getting the gear and the housing to stay put. I think he ended up welding it in. I invented another way of those housings of bolting a gear into the housing, okay. which is reliable. So that was the start of it for you? That's, yeah. what, that's what you started doing? Yeah. So then what happened then with then, so you went from there, you mastered that, the gearing and so everything? We got the, so we got that sorted, got the engine reliable, ended up, my car ended up being turboed. It went quite good, it's still a road car. Yeah, then we thought, sharp. well, if we can make three, we can make four. Yeah. So I thought, oh, made it a bit different at the back, because I didn't like the way Mazda did it. Um, yeah, yeah, you changed, you changed, changed, changed the tape, the, the, this spline was in the shaft, not in the lathe, like it is on a real one. I changed the ladder out a little bit, which I think is a little bit better. And yeah, got one going, and Bryce McEwen had it in his car for a long time. A car called 4RE, it was at the drags, he ran that for years. Yeah. He had the first one. Wow, so, how, so that would have been, well, 20 odd years ago. Yeah, it's eight years ago that was. That he had that, and that got sold, that's, that's in China now, that car. And then just slowly more and more of them started to go, and people started to turbo them. And I still didn't break. Four Road is a happy, a happy E shaft, isn't it? Yeah, it's, 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 it's just a happy engine. There's so many of them out there. Nutcase ones with big power, and people, like, we've got 1700 horse out of one. But before built plates, Brilliant. yeah. yeah before yeah. that, yeah, yep. just on cast iron plates. So what about the, what's the highest number of horsepower that we, we, we have seen so far out of a, a four-rotor? I think the Puerto Ricans got a couple of thousand out of one. So they have hit the 2,000? I think so, yeah. There's no reason why it can't. Yeah. But I think that was, like, again, on cast iron plates. Okay. So it probably would have broken. Okay. The, the bullet plates is a different story altogether. With the five-rotor, what sort of power do we think we could get out of that in theory and... Just 25% more than a quad. So a peripheral port one will make probably, I don't know, say the 700 horsepower. Out of this year? Yeah. NA, okay. NA PP108, 725 horsepower. Okay, now six rotor E shaft? So the six rotor is just 50% up on a quad, so it'll make like 900. Do you think connecting two four rotor E shafts together would be a more would I say easier uh, and put a couple easier. of <laughs> but it's using existing tech. Yeah. You know the forward works. The front of the back engine would be a problem because it's got to have some sort of a coupling. It's also got to be joined to the back of the other engine. So the whole front of that back engine would be weird. Yeah. It kind of takes it, but it would be achievable yep. what you yeah. think. And you're using existing tech. You know that works. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's gonna happen with the eight rotor, it's Completely, yeah. Just no idea. I, every question that I throw at you with a four rotor E shaft is pretty good, isn't it? It's everyone out there watching, like it's four rotor E shaft is the. It's the ultimate one. It's just such a cool engine. Cool sounding, yeah, it, it just, works. It just sounds awesome. Yeah. Right. So that's basically been lapped. Those two parts have been lapped together so they become a matched pair, so they really fit. They are a pair, and they have to stay as a pair. So when they're being machined, they're so when machined. it's being machined, when I grind it, it's it's really right. It's like it's the, the angle's right, but it's still not a matched pair. So we get grinding paste, which is why it's grey, and we lap it like an old valve. Oh yeah. So they match. Yeah, yeah. That's they the, marry in and bend yeah, in. And that becomes a matched pair. Uh -huh. Those two things are exactly the same as each other. So when you bolt it all together, it 100% contacts. Yeah, the X40. That's the strength of the. It's just the hardness of the base material. Yeah. So if it's not an X40, it'll be about probably, it's bar stock, which is about 31 rock ball, and the Mazda product's about 28. Okay. So thanks kindly for your time, Jeff. You're a real gentleman, and yeah, I hope, I hope to see you continue making these for many years to come, mate. <laughs> you do an incredible job. Okay, guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed, and a big shout out, and a massive thank you to Jeff for allowing me to do it. Everyone, please like and subscribe again if you haven't already done that because um, I want to head overseas now uh, to Orlando um, and I guess inform you guys what's going on over there and why the Orlando um, uh, cars are doing what they're doing. There are reasons for all of this and I'm going to go directly to the source.